Hello and welcome to this tech talk on loop segment skirts looking at the transition between the bow and side shapes plus how to deal with skirt bounce. I am by no means an expert on skirt design but over the last 49 years or so I have designed a few skirts, made some errors but mainly honed my design skills as the years have gone on. For those that don't know me here's a quick review of my journey over the years building hovercraft. My journey started in June 1971 with this craft, logbook number 51. It's my take on Peter Gooch's J4. My craft was far too heavy, underpowered, and the loot segment skirt was to say the least not very good. There was nothing to help design skirts in those days, and I worked up the drawings for this craft from photographs and drawings in the Hovercraft World magazine. Via the Hover Club, I met Ron Fishlock, who had started work at Hovercraft Urban Limited in the mid-60s, eventually working on dynamic model testing before moving to Hover Marine to become the company's skirt specialist. Ron's Mistral was the inspiration for my next craft. Here he is in 1972 with me at Weymouth Beach in Dorset. His craft had an absolutely superb skirt. The lift engine was just three and a half horsepower. So, in 1973, I built Chinook, logbook number 74. The skirt was much better due to Ron's guidance, although when this photograph was taken, as you can see, there was still a problem at the aft corners. In 1976, I built a homemade inflatable hull with a loop segment skirt, designed using information contained in the Light Hardcraft Handbook. This skirt was much better, although unfortunately it cannot be seen in this photograph. 1978, Chinook 2. Similar in design to Chinook, the craft was a bit larger and had a much better skirt. In 1989, I built Marie's first racing craft, deviating from the loot segment skirt with a Roy Henvest full segment skirt. Uh, this was a wooden craft and it performed very well. Marie's second racing craft, an epoxy Kevlar version of the original, also with a Roy Henvest full segment skirt. She won the junior championship in this craft in 1991. There then followed a bit of a gap in my hovercraft building until my next venture, which utilised Rob Trussler's Hovar moulds, but instead of a full segment skirt, as seen here, I fitted a loop segment skirt, which worked well, although it did have an issue with skirt bounce, but more about skirt bounce later. I personally think the craft looks better with the loop segment skirt. The largest craft I designed a skirt for was the Skimmer 12. In the mid 70s, I drew and made the skirt for the prototype craft, which is shown in the top photograph. Again, using the basic principles laid out in the Light Hovercraft Handbook. The bottom photos show production craft with skirts manufactured by Air Cushion Equipment Limited, which is Roy Henvest, to buy original drawings. So why use the loop segment skirt? There, there are three basic types of skirt used in Light Hovercraft. Bag skirt, rate, used in racing and some cruising craft, uh, is vulnerable to damage and requires a higher fan pressure and hence fan power due to the differential pressure between the inflated bag and the cushion. The middle photograph full segment skirt, I think almost all UK racing craft have full segment skirts today. Relatively simple to make, easy and quick to change when damaged. Again, it requires a higher fan power to feed the lift air through the plenum to the segments. And finally the loop segment skirt. More suited I suppose to cruising craft. I personally think it gives a better ride. It almost gives a two-stage suspension uh, in, in uh, rough weather from the loop and the segment acting in different ways. The skirt requires less lift power as air is fed directly to the underside of the skirt. There's no plenums or ducting to increase the pressure and induce losses. Hull construction is simpler. The side plenums can be utilised for buoyancy and there are no issues with having wet or dry plenums. 
So I think, you know, what is what is there to not be gained by having a, a loot segment? I, I personally, for cruising craft, think it's the, great, the best. A couple of times during this presentation, I've referenced the Light Hovercraft Handbook, which over the years I've used as my Bible for skirt design. The book was first issued in 1974 to assist craft builders with design information. It was revised in 1976 in a glossy format with an updated information and more professional drawings. Unfortunately, in my opinion, this book is no longer available from the Hover Club. Keith Oakley edited both uh, ed editions of this book, bringing together information from a variety of publication sources, plus material specially written by very knowledgeable Hover Club members. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, loot segment skirts are not in the Home Constructors Handbook, which is available from the Hover Club. But uh, therefore, I thought it'd be a good idea if I resurrected and showed people the design principles and give some insight into the manufacture of a skirt. So if we first look at what does it, how do we get the geometry? How does it look? The, the side and bow segments use the same basic prim principles for their design. The bow loop is tight to give an element of anti-plow, while the side loop is a larger ballooning shape. The forces exerted by the air in the skirt trying to lift the loop have to be balanced by the forces on the segment pushing the skirt down. Equilibrium must be obtained for a stable skirt shape. In my opinion, when starting out to design a craft, apart from the overall design concept, one has to start with a skirt design, as this determines the planing surface shape. As can be seen from the drawings here, the bound planing surface is much longer than the side planing surface. So, starting with the side loop, uh, and the rear is the same shape, we need to determine the hover height, the hard structure clearance. Construction regulations recommend a maximum of the hard structure width divided by eight. Uh, so that, that seems to make a, a good stable cushion. I personally prefer the segments to be deeper than the hard structure clearance. This allows for good obstacle clearance and also allows for the segment inner attachment point to occur in the planing surface, which hopefully is not in the cockpit of the craft. If it's in the cockpit, there's a potential leak source, especially if using hollow pop rivets. To achieve a stable skirt, the bottom of the segment should always be 90 degrees and the segment at not 45 degrees to the ground. For stability, the side skirt ground contact point should be between three to eight centimeters inside the hard structure edge. That's position U on the drawings. So to get the geometry, uh, we construct a vertical line at position X on the top of the segment. Distance HX is one quarter of the length HI. If we draw a line between the loop segment attachment and the hull attachment points H and U. Line AB intersects line HU midway along, along HU and is set at 90 degrees to HU. So we have a line intersecting uh, that, that uh, line AB. Where AB intersects the vertical line from X is the center of the loop radius. And one can then draw a radius from H to U. Constructing a bow loop shape uses the same method as that for the side loop. However, in this case, the loop segment attachment point H should be between 5 and 10 centimetres inside the hard structure edge U. Draw, drawing these sections doesn't appear, doesn't require a lot of drawing equipment or a CAD package on a computer. These drawings were made with just a ruler, pencil and compass. If we look at the bow and side profiles, it's difficult to imagine how the loop transitions from one shape to another, not least as the skirt also rotates through 90 degrees. 
looking at this uh, enlarged photograph of a skimmer 12, um, my experience is that what I call the hemline, the join between the loop and the segment, should be a smooth curve and I normally use a simple radius. In the case of the skirt for the skimmer 12 in this photograph, the, the uh, join between the loop and the segment in fact was a semicircle uh, based on the bow and the centre line of the craft. So I've put together a, a whole shape uh, and in the uh, example I've shown here um, the, the skirt has a straight section across the bow and at the loop segment attachment line a radius joins the bow to the side between points 1 and 7. A full semicircle with its centre on the craft centre line could also be used if the whole shape allowed. The loop as it transitions from bow to side is constantly changing shape so to attain the intermediate shapes as the skirt transitions from the bow to the side a number of sections are taken. The minimum number of sections I would take are those at the change of hold direction. In this example positions 1, 3, 5 and 7. However to achieve an even smoother shape I would also take intermediate sections at positions 2, 4 and 6. At the transition points the same basic geometry is used to determine the shape of the loop noting the relative positions of the loop segment attachment point H and the hull loop attachment point U. We now have a nest of sections which equate to the positions shown on the previous slide. Here you can see how the loop shape changes as it transitions from the bow to the side but still conforms to the geometry required to obtain a stable skirt. The next task is to determine the shape of the individual loop panels. It is possible to develop the shape using drawing techniques or, as I've said earlier, a computer program. However, being a simple chap, I find the easiest method uh, of templating the transition is to make a full size mock up using the section shown in the previous slide. For the purpose of this presentation, I'm using a half size model and cardboard rather than wood. The left hand photo shows the planned shape of a loop segment hemline H and hard structure line U drawn onto a piece of hardboard. Positions of the interim sections are also included. I then transfer each section from the previous slide onto plywood or hardboard, cut out and glue in place. One can use a, a simple hot melt glue gun, doesn't have to be anything difficult. The loop segment attachment line H, which is the top of the segment, is the baseline for the model because that will be the horizontal. And one can see from the photographs, uh, particularly the top photograph on the right, the shape of the transition is now evident. Using stuff card or th uh, thin paper or, or whatever you want to use, hold over Using stiff paper or thin card held over each panel, mark the paper card or card where the section divisions occur. This will provide the basis for the panel templates. And you can see how this is done in the two left hand photographs on this slide. And on the right hand photograph, it shows the uh, panel shapes. Some of the panel shapes will look odd, but stick with it remember the loop is changing shape very quickly as it moves through the transition. You need to remember to add an allowance at the panel to panel joins, an allowance of the hull attachment line and an allowance at the top of the loop segment attachment, uh, what I call the hem line. Remember to add a sewing attachment at the panel to panel joins an allowance at the hull attachment line and an allowance at the loop segment attachment, I call the hemline. Tem templates for the opposite side of the hull uh, can be made as a mirror image of the templates produced from this, this model. 
that just leaves sewing the panels together in best blue Peter fashion, right sides together, making a segment attachment device and just forming the hull attachment. As an indication of time it takes to do this, the model in this presentation, albeit half scale, took just an afternoon to make, so you can see it is not a long and laborious task, but rather an easy solution to obtain the loop panel shapes. This should result in a smooth transition between the bow and side loop profiles. So here you can see um, a craft that and it's hovering and uh, you can see some panels, you can see a nice smooth transition from the bow round to uh, the size, size loop. So I mentioned skirt bounce a little earlier. Um, skirt bounce can be an issue with loop segment craft and is caused by the skirt geometry uh, being affected by air which is uh, escaping from underneath the, the segments. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a bit complex, but what happens, the air, high, high velocity, high pressure air is escaping underneath the segment, which causes the, uh, the segment to, to, to seal onto the ground. That causes uh, the air and the cushion to, to be slightly bigger in volume, uh, push the craft up, that then moves the segment up, and we start to then get a cyclical process. Um, and as you'll see from the video as I start it, um, in the case of the Skimmer 12, skirt bounce was accentuated by the inflatable tube, which also bounced. Um, skirt bounce is not a particularly pleasant uh, uh, phenomenon, and it will normally happen uh, to a greater extent on smooth surfaces such as uh, this concrete slipway. And you can see the, the skirt bouncing uh, as the craft was on full power trying to turn uh, to get down the slipway. To talk as a little more of an explanation on how to overcome skirt bounce, uh, I'm indebted to Malcolm Cox for the next part of this presentation, which provides a solution. Um, Malcolm many of you will not know, joined Hovercraft Development Limited in 1976 and was responsible for Hovercraft skirt design and development. Malcolm's career continued with Hovercraft Design and Consultancy and currently he is R&D Development Leader for Griffin Hoverwork Limited. So as we can see this, this is a skirt as we've seen before, the geometry as we've seen before and it shows the um, the forces that are enacting on the skirt. So the segment requires a minimum loop radius to, to, to balance the segment load. And you should note that being an open loop, both loop and segment are under uniform cushion pressure. So if we now uh, superimpose uh, an anti-bounce diaphragm on the original balanced section, uh, it would not give any benefit because the uh, diaphragm needs to be under tension. Tension can be generated by, in the diaphragm by selecting a greater loop radius. Tension in the anti-bounce diaphragm not only prevents skirt bounce but creates a more stable skirt section and enhances craft roll stiffness. A lighter material than the main loop material can be used for the the anti-bounce diaphragm. Don't forget of course to put vent holes in the diaphragm to allow free passage of air. Again the loop and segment are under uniform cushion pressure. Here's an example of a perfect loop segment skirt with an anti-bounce diaphragm on a Griffin 8000. This is a crash rescue craft uh, used at Singapore's Changi Airport. In principle, the skirt is exactly the same as we would use for a, a smaller cruising craft. 
The difference between the bow and loop shape can be seen. There is no bag or skirt dividers, just a simple cushion with uniform loop and cushion pressure. The only thing that is different in uh, this craft is that there is an anti-spray apron along the side loop, which is, ex is obscuring the segments uh, and uh, just makes it a bit more difficult to see how the segments are attached to the loop. So let's look in detail at the manufacture of a loop segment skirt. Nothing particularly difficult about it. As you can see in the left hand photograph, the segment is very simple. I use a, a tab on the top which is folded over and glued down to reinforce the attachment point. No sewing required. I use an ordinary impact adhesive such as Evo stick. I think it was Don Robertson, one of the designers of the original Griffin and predecessor of the Skimmer 12 and subsequent Griffin range, who came up with an idea to keep each segment butted up to the next, thereby reducing air loss at the loop segment attachment point. The photograph to the right shows a segment attachment strip, which is a long piece of material. I use something which is heavier than the skirt material, myself. The strip is folded over and sewn very close to the fold. This makes it easier to punch the segment attachment holes. The strip is then marked out with segment pitches, a slit made in one of the flaps and the holes punched for the segment bolts. Finally, the strip is sewn to the bottom of the loop, making allowance of course for the position of the loop segment attachment line. The sketch shows how the segment attachment strip is the interface between a loop and a segment and is sewn to the loop along the hemline. The photograph shows the attachment in real life. So you can see um, the plastic bolt coming through, um, through the segment is, is trapped uh, between the two layers of the segment attachment strip. Because the loop material itself is covering the segment attachment strip, one cannot see the bolts and it produces, I think, quite a nice finish. I hope you have found this presentation informative and enjoyable. I look forward to seeing more loop segment skirts on craft in the future.